Thank you very much, sir. Miyad mangi yamadam. Are you still awake? <laughs> I am so happy to be here today to, how do we do this here now? <laughs> the space bar on the back now, or the right button. Income from nature, turning challenges into opportunities, we all win. As a kid, I grew up in these forests, and in Guyana, where I am from, 80% of the forest cover is intact. And we have survived, we, we, we've had our medicines, we've had our food, we've had our recreation in this location. We have been able to survive or we, we continue to live with the knowledge of using the natural environment, things that are biodegradable. And uh, while I was growing up, I wondered what life was, was like, what it was what happens? Because I saw a number of old people, my granny, my father, and there was this quest for understanding more. And my grandmother said, life is like a game, or it is a game. That if we know our partners, and if we know what to do, all of us win, meaning man and nature, meaning the partners being the various life forms that manages the ecosystem. And that is what is important, knowing your partner so that we could win. What we do, what I do, what man do, what the worm does, what the fish does, what the jaguar does, what the tree does. So it is about understanding what this life is all about so that we could have a healthy ecosystem. So the wisdom was taught. And in the forest, you have, to, you have to be respectful because the, old, the, the elders would say, we are the ones that are intruding upon the life of others. We have to be very careful. We have to be respectful so that we could all have a, a place and respect for Mother Earth. The situation is that I know a number of scientists or a number of persons would say, they would call this slash and burn. Putting a really barbaric sort of thinking, slash and burn, like you're going to chop and kill. But we prefer to call it rotational farming. Because this is, this is very serious in the lives of indigenous peoples. While we do that, we allow Mother Earth to be given the opportunity to allow new trees to grow, new plants to grow. And when this is, when this is being used after three, four years, we begin to, we leave it, we move to another spot, and then you see new trees, mainly medicinal trees coming. Further to that, when there are plants, fruits, vegetables, you have animals and birds 
also using the very spot. We've been thinking about this for many years. I've seen the progression from our way of life to the incoming of development. We cannot stop development. We realize that. We have seen challenges such as logging, logging starting, mining. And these are challenges that we go through, we face. But again, we deal with a nation and we look for economic growth. But then it could be disastrous if we do not know what to do. And here we could have, we look at the opportunities instead of the negatives. What has happened, our people have decided that nothing for us without us. We need to take a position. We also cannot live alone. It is about finding the balance. And our way of operation, we have nine indigenous groups across Guyana speaking different languages and practices are different. So my, my group is the Makushi group. I would not use, let us say, like the monkeys, but I have uh, my neighbor who would be using that. So in a way, we are conserving that species here for our friends over there. Or I might not be eating frogs, but we have another group that eat frogs. So, and they're plentiful in our area. So we're conserving that, and when they get plentiful, they go. And all around the country, it is the same. Some people do not eat paka or wild meat, but they will eat deer. So that, uh, we eat a lot of paka and deer and wild hog. So those things are kept there, and it is a way of conservation, and our way of doing things are a little different. So we, we do not focus on one area, say like logging or mining alone. We do it a little bit of everything so it continues to survive, the nature continues to survive. So our, our people, we've learned that in development, which must happen, we need to be part of it, part and parcel of the decision making. First, the idea, the discussion, the planning, implementation, and looking for the sustainability. And we have been partnering with a number of NGOs, and I'm happy that uh, CI has made a presentation. We have been collaborating with CI, WWF, Awakrama, other conservation groups, like-minded people, looking for a balance, looking for that way of working and living together. For the way forward, our people says, when the stomach is filled, we think about the other things, or we could think about the other things. If the stomach is empty, we think about filling it, and we could get into trouble for that. So, in this development, we have been focusing on agriculture, food, food security, healthy eating, and all of this is part of a, a movement at this time in our history. So we have these young persons here working with other young foreigners who come to visit. We have had a number of 
capacity building. And we have found that we have a lot of hardworking people. As a matter of fact, we have always been. But we have also found a lot of followers. What is missing are leaders. So what we're doing here, we are training young leaders who could be able to represent, who could be able to defend, who could be able to stand up for the love of nature, for what nature should be, and to, to defend our community, of course, with the understanding of the partnership. We have also been using for years in bartering, you know, we, we used to trade, just take things, we exchange. But today we have seen jewels from the forest, like beads. We have the young people, as you're seeing here, getting into the jewel business, into things from the plants, say the crabwood oil, uh, the ite palm, they, they have their scientific name, but I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you from the common side of things. And these things are biodegradable. You can go to the forest year after year and have a living off of this. This includes bird watching, and 95% of the time, our guides take bur uh, birders into the location. They see the hot birds. They're really hot birds, the special birds there. And it's getting bigger. Tourism is something new for us. But it's, it is using the forest to be getting, uh, earning a dollar. And what happens in the community is we rotate workers. We do not work full out like a, 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 the normal government uh, workers until you meet 65 then you go on leave <laughs> you work two weeks uh, two months on or one month depending on your availability so you have freedom and a love of life to interact to live life as it should this is one example of what uh, the tourism activity is all about and this community actually is my community. But I'm not boasting about it, but I just wanted to promote it. <laughs> and anytime you feel like, just get in touch with us. I'll leave my contact. And here is where we've had a number of persons coming. And the people themselves are managing this. I used to be there. I'm no longer there. One beautiful thing that happened for, to, to us in 1992, we changed the sort of authority, partnership. Women used to be looked upon as, you know, um, what you call it, uh, tender things, things for home. But we had to change that because we hadn't enough men. And of course, men will only think men, men's story. So we had to get the women on board. And today, I am so happy to see that the majority of administrators in my community and other communities are women. We have other areas like fishing, sightseeing. These are just some of them. This here is the largest waterfall in the world. This is the Kaichur Falls. One drop. It's 700, 700 feet, one drop, and then it goes for another 22 feet. So this is a, one of our landmarks. In addition to that, we have the giants. We call them the giants of El Dorado. The jaguars, the black caiman, the anaconda, the giant anteater, the arapaima, the largest sweetwater fish, tapir, and many other things that 
would attract you to the, the beautiful country of Guyana. We also speak, well, we try to speak English, so you could, un I hope you're understanding me. <laughs> so we are at this time at the point of, uh, well, we have found oil, a great discovery in, in great abundance. The fear is if we, are not, if we do not prepare now, we, it could be disaster. So our young people, we are getting them organized so that we do not forget agriculture. We do not forget the other activities. And we would work in partnership. We do, we'd look at other events that caused destruction and try to avoid it. And not to get swell-headed, but to work together in partnership with others who know so that nature and all of us, well, I would say, we all, we all win. Thank you very much.